My name is Ines Lopez Doria and I am Lead Environmental Officer. Environmental archaeology allows us to um, understand how the landscape was in the past and also how uh, past societies made the use of that landscape and how they interacted with the um, natural resources. Our colleagues in the field take samples, uh, they put them in buckets and the buckets are brought here to the office and then we have a team of environmental processors who process the samples mostly by flotation and um, the flotation produces two types of uh, products, they, it produces floats and it produces residues, both of which are looked at at the microscope um, at different stages. So we put the um, um, floats and the residues under the microscope to um, um, scan the environmental evidence. We extract it um, for assessment purposes and also for analysis purposes and quantification. And basically what the microscope allows us to do is to identify the environmental evidence. It could be plant remains, insect remains, uh, animal, small animal remains. And um, it allows us to compare it with other reference material that we may have in our reference collection. We can make observations on the structure and the anatomy. So it's basically for identification. We need to identify the material to be able to, to know what species were used in the past and how the landscape was. And um, it's, uh, it's essential to use the microscope to be able to do the identifications properly. So with the naked eye, you can probably see a, a charred plant remain, but you cannot tell exactly what it is. So we, we use the camera to photograph any environmental remains that are going to be destroyed, for example, as part of radiocarbon dating. And also when we um, identify anything that is unusual or important, and ideally this would go into our publication so other researchers can see what we have identified and um, we can present our justification for providing that identification. Mm -hmm.